Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's L Chat. Um, I am so excited to have you guys tuning in today and really excited that Morgan is joining me. She has experience in running and growing a product based business um, and has been extremely successful. And I run a service based business. So I thought it'd be really helpful for those of you who have products and are getting ready to launch products to hear from her and gain her wisdom on this topic. So I'm really excited to invite her on in just a few minutes. But before I do, I want to make sure that you all can see me and hear me okay. So if you wouldn't mind leaving me a comment in the comment section and just letting me know that you can see me and hear me, awesome. Thank you, Christina and Christy. Um, glad that you guys are here and tuning in from all over the world. We have Norway, Costa Rica, Uruguay. Um, it is awesome. It's international. So I'm glad that you all are able to tune in um, today. And for a lot of you, this is your first time to L Chat. I actually am getting ready to host these webinars weekly again, starting in 2017. But this is the last webinar, L Chat webinar for 2016. Um, so it's been a great year and I'm excited about the guests we have in store and the content um, that I'm going to share with you in 2017. All my years are messed up. Um, so I'll invite Morgan on in just a second, but for those of you who are brand new to LChat, um, I want to show you around the screen just a little bit. My cat loves to hop up here. It's really casual, y'all. Um, all right. So um, to show you around the screen just a little bit, um, there's a questions and topics section. It looks like you all have already found the comment section, but right underneath the screen, you should see a questions and topics section where you can ask questions now or throughout the webinar. And we're going to leave about 15 to 20 minutes um, with Morgan at the end for her to answer these questions for you. A cool feature is that you can actually vote up questions too. So if you see a question that you really want answered, go ahead and give it a vote and we will. Um, I'll have Morgan answer the questions in order of the number of votes. So, um, yes, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and invite Morgan on. Give me just a second. It takes just a minute. Um, awesome, Denise. Thank you for saying you love these L chats. I'm glad they've been helpful for you. So. Just a little background of how I know Morgan and met Morgan. Morgan is actually one of my coaching clients. And when she reached out to me, she told me that she had this extremely successful Etsy business. And there she is. Hi. <laughs> nice to have you on. Hey, so excited to be here. Yeah, so everyone meet Morgan. Hey, guys. A lot of you already know Morgan, so that is awesome too. But I'm so glad to have you here. I was just telling them that you reached out to me for coaching, but you had already grown this amazing Etsy shop. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah. I so was I feeling really was confident really in producing confident and promoting product, and promoting product like product because I sold baby headbands and I could, I could make the sales and that wasn't a problem there, but I really wanted to dive into services because I was getting a lot of questions from people about like, how can you make it successful on Etsy and how do you get more sales and how do you use Instagram for Etsy? And I love those questions so much. And I was like, I want to do this. Like I want to teach. And so, but I had no idea where to start and I've been following Lauren forever and she started offering coaching services and I was like, yes, yes, sign me up, like, please. <laughs> and it has been so fun. It's been awesome. So yeah, I'm, I'm grateful. And <laughs> I, I was telling them too, that you are awesome because you have grown this product based business where I have the most experience in services. So I'm really excited for you to share your wisdom because I get a lot of questions about products um, and especially shops and Etsy shops in particular too. So I'm really excited to have you joining in today. Yeah, thank, you thank you so much for having so, me. Of course. So um, j just to give people some background about your shop, let's start at the very beginning and what made you want to start a shop to begin with. So how did Little Highbury start? Okay, so Little Highbury is not the very beginning, actually. <laughs> so That's I had two shops before this that were complete flops. Um, <laughs> We're complete flops. They were great learning experiences. Um, but I started back in 2011. I um, was working for a publishing company in Salt Lake City, Utah, which is where I live. And um, there was we were publishing a book on starting your own business. And I was one of the people that was like pre-selected to read through the book. And I was like, okay, whatever, I'll read through it. And, and as I was looking through it, I was like, this is great stuff. And I got so excited. And I was like, you know what, like, let's start a business. <laughs> And just like that, like that night, I was like, I'm going to start an Etsy shop. Like, that seems like a good place to start. Um, and okay. so, so yeah, I decided to start an Etsy shop. Um, 
my husband was in in school and grad school working and working full time. So I had a lot of free time on my hands. And so I just decided I was going to start a shop. Um, and it flopped. <laughs> and I was um, losing money, like, <laughs> for every order, I was probably losing like one to $2. I was trying to like sell super cheap, because I was like, people will only buy it if I'm the lowest price on the market. So I was selling super cheap and totally cutting myself short. Um, mm -hmm. And so I started another one that um, I kept it, the name was Highbury Place, so I didn't switch names <laughs> much. But um, I started another one creating wedding like guest books and invitations. And that one went okay, I got like a sale here or there. Um, but I really had no idea what I was doing. I was just like listing product and like sitting in front of the computer waiting for the sales to come flowing in. So um, I quit that because I got pregnant, <laughs> which it just was overwhelming for whatever reason. Um, I got pregnant and I had my baby and I'd been working as an events manager um, for a company in Idaho Falls. We'd moved up to Idaho Falls and I was the breadwinner of our family, which was like, I didn't mind. It was something I loved to do. I loved to bring in the money. Um, and suddenly I went from like being breadwinner, planning events, doing 4,000 things at once to like sitting at home, holding a crying newborn. Like I was completely out of my element. Um, and for some of the people that have been following around with me for a while with Little Highbury, they know that I suffered from extreme postpartum depression, like 18 months of, I can't remember anything that happened there. Um, mm. It wasn't awesome. <laughs> it was a horrible experience. But the way I got out of it was I decided I was going to try one more time to start an Etsy shop. Um, and I was going to try and find something that could distract me from the feelings I was having, not necessarily distract me from motherhood, but distract me from feeling just so lost and isolated and alone in this like huge adjustment role. So I started Little Highbury. Um, I did a lot of research while she was nursing or sleeping. I was constantly just looking up ideas and trying out strategies and things like that. Um, I launched in, I think, 2013. Yeah, November 2013. Um, we made $2,000 that month and then things just went exponential from there. It was crazy and so exciting. So that, that was a long winded story of how Little Highbury got started. And it's really neat to hear too, and I'm glad that you said it, that you had two ideas before this that flopped because oh, I think yeah. for a lot of people who tune into these L chats and hear people speaking on these topics, it's really easy to think that they had, it was easy right from the start. And for me, I started with planners, trying to sell planners a product yeah. and it flopped <laughs> terribly. Like you said, I was actually spending money trying to sell my planners. For each yep. planner, I think I lost like dollars um and was oh going in the red so um so thank you for sharing that um and it's really neat to hear how little highbury got started so um yes yeah, so when you said you had two etsy businesses prior mm -hmm. to little highbury why did you choose etsy over other platforms what drew you to etsy so um i shopped on etsy before and um I kind of knew a little bit about how it worked. Like I didn't know the SEO and stuff like that, obviously, because my first two shops <laughs> did little things. But um, it was it was just it just seemed like the easiest option. I had um, seen a lot of Etsy success stories around, and I was obsessed with their quit your day job series, like just for fun. Like I wasn't planning on starting a business, but I was like, this is so cool that people are like following their dream because I was following mine being an event manager at the time. And I was like, this is awesome, and then. Etsy just seemed like the place to start when I was like, okay, I'm going to do a business. And like Shopify overwhelmed me, like <laughs> store envy, anything else. I was, it just overwhelmed me. And I was like, okay, Etsy is like pretty straightforward. We can, we can do this. Um, and it was also great because Etsy drives so much traffic to your shop, like for you, like you don't have to do anything. So right. like those first few months that um, I was doing little hybrid because I'd taken the time and gotten everything um, set up and all my ducks in a row, if you will. Um, it was just driving traffic for me, like literally while I slept and I was making sales. I'd wake up to like five or six sales the next morning and I'd be like, this is amazing. So Etsy to me, it just made sense because I wasn't sure how to promote a shop quite yet. Um, and I've gotten a lot better since then, but ha having Etsy drive that traffic in gave me like the courage to, to start and keep going. Cause I was like, okay, I'm making sales. Now I can, you know, focus on driving traffic instead of like opening a Shopify site and being like, nobody likes my stuff. Like this sucks. So anyway, yeah. that's kind of, that's kind of why I chose Etsy. So, yeah. And it's really hard when you're starting out. I feel like, especially with a product based business, um, and you don't have any audience. Yes. So with Etsy, it gives you exposure to an audience right away. Absolutely. Whereas if you just had a self-hosted shop, like on Squarespace or wherever else, um, it would be yeah. really, really hard to no. 
it's yeah. absolutely, I mean, it's, it's hard to run an online business for sure. And Etsy just kind of gives you that leg up and that jump start that you need to have the courage to keep going, especially if it's like your first or second business. And you're just like, I don't, I don't know if it's going to work. Like, I don't know anybody else that's doing this, which yeah. is, um, Etsy is just an awesome way to have that built in audience if you haven't already built one up. So I absolutely agree. That's awesome. So tell me about what you think the key difference was between those first two shops. And then when you started to gain traction with your third shop, do you feel like it was, um, it was your idea, what you were selling? What, what do you think was different? Um, Um, I honestly don't think it was my ideas. Like I'm not saying I have anything life changing, but they were all decent business ideas. Other people mm -hmm. were making them work for them. It wasn't like I was creating this random product that I had to create a market for and everything. And and no one had ever heard of it. Like there was a market for the products and things like that. Um, my first two Etsy shops, I really, I honestly, I'll be honest and this is so embarrassing, but I thought you set up shop on Etsy and people just flooded in. Like you didn't have to worry about good pictures or SEO. Like people sold on eBay all the time with really crappy pictures. My mom was one of them. Like (laughs) she just snap it with her phone and then just list it, you know? And I was like, yeah, you can do that on Etsy. That's fine. Whatever. And so, um, I was terrified of a camera anyway. So I actually like digitally mocked up my my photos. I was doing stationery for the first business. I totally right. digitally mocked them up. I didn't even know that there was like, you could buy mock-up photos. I just like opened Adobe Illustrator and made up. It was so dumb. It was so bad. <laughs> it's on the blog. If you want to see how bad those photos were. Um, I love it. Progress. <laughs> That's where no, we all progress. Um, yes. So yeah. So the first two were just like completely ugh, whatever. Like I was just, I was pretended like I knew what I was doing and I just thought you just set up or whatever. Um, but for this third one, I just had so much time that I could like sit and research and really understand like the strategy. Cause there is totally a strategy behind Etsy, um, and SEO and just getting found on there. And, and so for this next one, before I opened doors, I was like, Hey, we're going to get the SEO, you know, the SEO ducks in a row. I'm going to have my brother come over and help me learn how to use this camera that I bought that I had no idea how to use. Um, and I'm just going to do the best that I can and, you know, work on my copy and just see how it goes. And everything was optimized from the get go. And it was insane how crazy it took off and how fast. So awesome. So you, you mentioned that photos make a huge difference in yes. getting noticed oh on gosh. it. Copy yeah. And in that too. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, the photos I think is what's a lo- really hard for a lot of product sellers because like to be a business owner, you have to be good at so many things. And if you're selling services though, you don't have to be good at taking photos necessarily. Like you can buy stock photos for your blog. You can create graphics online, but if you're selling products, you have to have product photos. Like that's what sells your product. Um, and so that was a huge thing for me. I initially hired it out. Like I learned a little bit from my brother and I was too overwhelmed with the postpartum. (laughs) I was like, I can't do this, whatever. Um, so I hired it out and that was an awful experience. Like I paid a lot of money. Um, but she like just the colors weren't right. The vibe wasn't what I was going for because it was her style, which is fine, but it just wasn't what I was looking for. Um, and the biggest thing I did was really just suck it up and decided I was going to learn how to use my camera, how to use Photoshop and edit my own photos. And that has been the best thing that I've done for my business by far. Um, anytime I need photos for Instagram or anything like that, just having those skills is huge to just be able to snap it and edit it and get to go. So absolutely. It definitely seems like, and I've done a few L chats on photos too. And it seems like every time it is well worth spending a little bit of money, investing mm-hmm. in a good camera. You don't have to have a DSLR, but as no. you know how to use one um, and learning how to take great photos for yourself. So that's awesome. Yeah. And I totally on the blog, there is a blog post on that that actually has like a cheat sheet of all the tools I use. If in case you're like, I don't even know where to start. Like I have a list of all my tools, exactly what I use. That is awesome. Um, to get the photos. So <laughs> yeah, I I'll go and grab that link to, to share. Morgan's blog is extremely helpful. Um, so, oh, you're so just nice. <laughs> putting that out there too. Um, and she's been sharing a lot. I mean, just completely transparent about how she how she started and grew her Etsy shop. So definitely check that out. Um, so to, you mentioned SEO, how did you optimize little Highberry in the SEO department? Um, so I mentioned that I played around like with the other Etsy shops in the past and hadn't really worried about SEO. I was more concerned about coming up with like cute and clever names for my products. I like, I can't even think of any examples, but I was just determined that they were going to be like boutique style and just like, you know, moonlight, I don't even know, (laughs) moonlight sparkle or, you know, like just those names that people give things. Um, and I decided that I was 
I wanted to get found. Like that was the first priority. Like, yes, maybe I can come up with cutesy names later, but right now I needed to get the word out and I needed to get found and SEO just made sense. Like that was the long-term way to get found. And so I Mm -hmm. researched a ton and I, um, AB tested a ton. I, (laughs) I created double listings of a lot of my products and just tried out different Mm -hmm. methods. Um, and saw which ones perform better. And then if one was obviously not performing, I would just deactivate that um, and then learn from, from that and try and make it better. And I'm constantly testing and tweaking SEO. The one thing I think um, about SEO is, yeah, it set it and forget it, but you have to check it like every four to six months because words change, like seasons change. Um, things people are searching for, like people were searching for baby headbands back in 2013 when I started. But then the knotted headband became super popular and the baby turban headband is so sad that I know this. <laughs> like, who knows this kind of stuff? No, it's a good thing that you know. But, um, also, just really quickly, yeah. this might be just on my end, but the video turned off. So it might be oh, if you look at the buttons at the top uh-huh. or I can invite you back on too, either way. Can, can you all still. see? There she goes. Okay, you're good. We're good. On my end. Okay, good. Oh, good. Every- <laughs> It was just on my end then. Awesome. Sorry to cut you off. No, you're so totally good. you were saying so things change oh, in yeah. SEO. Yeah, being- so like SEO is totally it's it's my number one tip for like getting found on Etsy, absolutely. But you can't you can set it and forget it, but you have to remember it in four to six months. Like you have to go in um and update, especially with holidays and things to take into account like that. Um but yeah, with in terms of like baby headbands and general keywords like baby headbands was this huge search term and I still show up really well for that. But then baby turbans became like a thing. Like that wasn't even a thing before 2013. People were just buying these fluffy headbands and calling it a day. And then suddenly everybody's searching for baby turbans. And I was like, Oh, you know, let's add that in. And that brought in a whole bunch more views. So um, a lot of it is really just about trying out new things and doing a lot of testing and just constantly tweaking and, and working to improve it. Um, I use a tool called Marmalade and I mentioned that on the blog um, as well. You can find that on, um, I think it's like my SEO hacks post on there. Um, But Marmalade is a great one for Etsy sellers. Um, Google Keywords is great for any sellers, but if you're looking specifically to sell on Etsy, Marmalade is a great way to research keywords, find out what's going to hopefully perform well for you, um, and you can keep track of how how certain keywords are doing in your listings for SEO. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. So helpful. Um, And if you can't tell already, guys, Morgan really does her research and works super oh, hard um, so on her nice. business. So also just fitting that in there that um, super, super hard worker, but it goes to show too, that if you do do your research and SEO isn't necessarily the most fun thing to keep no. up with, um, <laughs> but it definitely pays off and it can go a long way with your business. Um, yeah. To- and I want to add in with SEO. Um, when I first started, I thought it was like you changed your SEO and you immediately got like viewed better. And SEO is a long-term mm-hmm. fix. And that's, Something that I feel like a lot of like um, Etsy sellers don't know that you you can hop on the forums and everybody's like I changed my SEO and everything's not working again and da da da. But it seriously for established sellers, I found it takes about two to three weeks for your SEO changes to really be implemented back into the Etsy um, logarithm search. But hmm. um, for newer shops, it takes a little bit longer. It can take up to six weeks to kind of get found in search results and things like that. So just because you haven't seen an increase in sales overnight, like you won't, (laughs) like even if you've sold 20,000 items, you will not see an increase in sales overnight just from switching tags that day. Like you have to wait a little bit and just wait it out. And, um, I always record the numbers weekly, just kind of when I add a new Mm -hmm. listing, just to see how it's doing. And if it's improving, then great. And if it's just kind of stagnant and not doing much, then we switch it up. So that just remember it's long-term, but it's like the best thing you can do for your business because it's constantly working for you. So. Yeah. So this is the question that I see very often. Um, and I've often wondered myself, does mm-hmm. the number of items in your shop play a part in getting seen on Etsy and how many do you need to start off Absolutely. with? Absolutely. Um, so I, I've made my first sales with little Highbury. I had 12 items in my shop. It was just a little, I was so excited when I made my first sale, I was like jumping up and down and I still get so excited every time I make a sale. Um, but I just had 12 and I was making like a sale here and there. And I just kept adding more. Like I was trying to add at least 10 a week, um, which is crazy. I don't even know. I had a newborn. I'm not even sure how I did it. Like it was divine intervention or something. Oh my word. <laughs> so, um, but I just kept adding and adding. And when I hit about 50, like things started to kind of really take off. And I said, mm-hmm. I think at about like 80 something right now. 
I'm not entirely sure. It's wow. been a while since, but um, once I hit 50, <laughs> things just started to take off because I was being seen on like page one of search and two and three and four and five. So people were seeing my product over and over and over again, mm -hmm. which is huge. Like um, that's another thing. People aren't going to buy just because they see your product once they're like, Oh my gosh, I have to have that. Like sometimes, yes, sometimes you retail therapy is a real thing, but other right. times um, it's just seeing it over and over again. And then making sure people are stopping to take a look and be like, Oh, okay. Yeah, no, that is kind of cool. And just to think about it. Um, I shared this on my blog too, but West Elm is like so good at that. <laughs> So Laura knows that like my entire home is furnished and like, West Elm stuff. I love West Elm so much. Um, but some of their stuff they come out with is like weird. Like I, there was like a, a bench and it had like a lamp post that came off and a lamp that hung over the bench. It was all one piece of furniture. And then it had a storage bin. I was like, that is the ugliest piece of furniture I've ever seen. And it followed me everywhere on the internet with ads and just like on their homepage and the emails I was getting. And by <laughs> I thought that was a pretty cool piece of furniture by the time we were done. I was like, I need this. Like it's a light and a storage thing and a bench. So anyways, um, that's, so obviously your products are not that, like if they are, that's but it just, awesome. But it you goes have to, to show that the more they see it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's that repetition. Yeah. I think everybody says it's like seven times before someone's converted into buying your product. It really is just repetition. And so if you're getting found on the search page for like the term baby headbands or whatever on page one and two and three and four and five, like they're going to see you over and over and over again. And they're going to be like, okay, maybe I should take note. Like it looks like she's a real thing. So that's something that really you know, helps me. You people can favorite things. And I know mm -hmm. I go back into my favorites and look all the time. Um, so the more they see it there too, but yeah. So helpful to know. So you mentioned when your first sales started coming in and getting so excited, <laughs> when did sales really start to pick up and you thought, Hmm, I might be able to really take this full time and, and have a full time income off of the shop. Yeah. So it was crazy. Um, I actually remember the exact day that I thought that. So my husband was, um, he was doing student teaching at the time and, and working full time um, in kind of a lowish paying job. Like it was, it wasn't meant to be his career. He was just trying to get into a career. And so we weren't making ends meet. Like that's, it was so scary. Like, cause I wasn't working. I had a new baby. Um, and so that's, you know, that's another reason I kind of started a little hybrid. I'm like, we need to make money and I need a way to like get out of this motherhood thing. And so um, I sat down, it was like January 1st and we'd made probably about, we'd made 6,000 sales and I uh, like five or 6,000 sales um, in November, between November and December of 2013, I think it was. And I was like, and it was like the first part of January, I think it was like January 4th. And we were, you know, bringing in a, a few hundred dollars a day. And I was like, you know, we can like really do this. Like if I, if I set my mind to this, like I know we can turn this into something. And it seemed crazy because it was like baby headbands. And I mentioned baby headbands all the time, obviously, because I'm experienced with it, but it's a, it's not like a ridiculous product, but it's nothing brilliant. Like it's just on the baby's head. Like it's nothing life changing or, oh my gosh, I have to have this. It's just a baby headband. Um, and so just to say that your product idea doesn't have to be ridiculously innovative and the first on, you know, you can, you can totally sell something that's already on the market and there already is a market for if you put your own spin on it. Um, but yeah, we, we started making a couple hundred dollars a day and I was like, you know, this is like the real thing. And so we just started honing in, adding more designs, um, becoming involved mm -hmm. on our social media and, um, really just working to get ourselves out there. And things just took off like from that January, that month it jumped and every three months or so it would just jump crazy high. Like it would, it slowly increase. And then every three months or so we'd, you know, jump up a few more thousand dollars per month and, and it just, it just got crazy. So it was super exciting. That's awesome. So what are some things that you think you mentioned that for SEO mm -hmm. and um, copy and images, but was there anything else that really helped you spike um, in during that time, like November, December, January? Is there anything else you would attribute to the spike? Um, Holiday? Yeah, you know? Yes. Oh my gosh. If you're going to start a business, start in November because you will feel so good about yourself. <laughs> like seriously, I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. But then things kept growing. So it was it was really good. Um, they could have tapered off then, but I would definitely say that one of the things that I did, and, um, I know Lauren knows about this, the purple cow is it, it's called the purple cow by, so yeah, it's that a book. Um, and it tell it talks all about just, even if your products like the, is not anything innovative, um, you need to make your products stand out and be different. And so that's kind of what we did with little hybrid. Um, I'd ordered headbands before for my baby girl from other companies and they always just came kind of in like a cello bag or just in the envelope with a business card. 
and I wasn't impressed. Like I was like, I'm paying, you know, $12 a headband. Like, I don't know. I feel like I could, they could do something better. It was a boutique buying experience. Um, and so I decided I was going to do that for a little hybrid. And so we um, invest a lot of money actually into boxes with gift ribbon. So, um, and we have metallic foil um, business cards. We just wanted to, when you open your package that you feel like, hey, I'm getting a present. Like this is kind of fun to open up. Um, and also if you wanted to give it for a baby shower gift, you could just send it directly to the recipient and it'd already be wrapped and ready to go. And so right. we made sure to hit that home. Like we included pictures of our packaging everywhere. Um, I love yeah, and we just made sure that everybody knew that you could include a short note um, and we'd send it directly to the recipient. And that became huge for us. Like we get so many baby shower orders all the time, like all the time. And Christmas, especially everybody's like, yeah, I'm sending this directly to the recipient. So glad it's already packaged. And it's so good and it's fun. And everybody photographs their box on Instagram because they're like, hey, about to say that. yep, yeah, exactly. It's perfect for word of mouth marketing because people are like, look, I got headbands, but they came in like this gift box. And it was cute. And there was a ribbon and a, a small note for Morgan. And it was just awesome. So that's what we hear. And that's what I hope I can provide for my customers. And yeah. I bet it encourages people if they have that great experience the first go round for the next baby shower yeah. or um, for the next season, they're right back on your Etsy shop purchasing again. Yeah. So, and it's easier. Statistics show it is so much easier to um, sell to existing clients mm -hmm. and previous, I mean, previous customers rather than it is to find new customers. Um, yeah. So. Um, one of the things that I found that helps with getting those repeat customers as well, especially when you're starting out, like it's critical to get those repeat customers um, because it, it validates your product essentially and lets you know that, Hey, yeah, my product is good. People are coming back after they've already seen it and like, I want more. Um, and one of the things that I found that was really helpful to um, validate the product idea. I'm like trying to, I've just lost my train of thought. You're all right. <laughs> Hold on. Return oh, um, yes. Okay. To return customers was to um, write them a short note. So Etsy doesn't really like email. Like they don't like you to email people. You have to, anyways, they recommend doing Etsy conversations, which has its benefits and its faults. But mm -hmm. every time I would get a sale, I would write them. I'd personalize. It. I'd just be like, Hey, Melissa, or Hey, Lauren. Um, and then I just have a, a copy and paste thing that just said, you know, thank you so much for your order. You made my day. Here's the details of when it's going to ship. Um, here's what you, you know, here's when you can average time of when you can expect to receive it. And then I made sure and included like, be sure to share it on Instagram. I'd love to see your little one wearing it. And that became huge. Like we have so many people that hashtag like little hybrid or just tag us in photos. And then we get more customers from that. Um, it's huge. So repeat customers establishing that connection with them and then having them go and start on social media. They've, I mean, like whether they know it or not, they've kind of formed a bond a little bit with your company. Like there's a, a back and forth kind of thing there. Um, and they're going to yeah. think of you next time for your product. So that is awesome. And two, I know a lot of people who shop on Etsy want to support small businesses rather mm -hmm. than going to Amazon or, you know, other yeah. places. Absolutely. That's why they go to Etsy. So when you provide that personal touch, it allows them to connect with you. Yeah. Um, so I love that you do that and that you create that connection there. That is awesome, awesome advice. Um, so when your business started to spike, I'm curious, how did you keep up with it? Having a little one and trying to fill orders, how did you keep up with the demand that started to come in? So I cried a lot. Um, <laughs> But seriously, I do. My poor husband. He like he's he's studying mental health counseling, and I think we can all <laughs> safely assume why. Um, so I, I I did. I spent a lot of time crying, but that's not. I think how it's I normal for it. any business <laughs> owner and when hard. it gets like, overwhelming. It's a blessing, but it's hard. It totally mm -hmm. is. Um, so actually, my mom is a brilliant seamstress, and so I'm not so much a great seamstress. I can sew, and I, I started a company sewing stuff, so obviously I can sew. But right. um, I just farmed it all out to her. I was terrified of hiring like a company to do them for me because I think I'm pretty sure at this point it's allowed on Etsy to like have small manufacturers, batch manufacturers to do it. Mm -hmm. um, but I wasn't at that point, and I still wanted to keep it handmade, which we still do. Um, so I, I hired my mom on a contractual basis. I was so afraid I wouldn't be able to pay her for the work she did. So I'm like, only do what I have orders for, like, don't work ahead. Um, and, and that worked out really well. And then I hired like a, some more help and some more help. And not every hire was awesome. Like I am awful at firing people. And <laughs> it was like, it was hard. It was one of those hard business lessons that you hope you never have to learn how to do, but you totally have to like oh, yeah. just, and one that you can't really be taught. No, I mean, it's a, you just have to, you can get advice and wisdom on mm -hmm. hiring, but 
it's kind of one of those things that you just have to. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I, I've learned a lot that way. I made so many mistakes. Um, <laughs> if you're looking for like an Etsy success story, yes, little hybrid is a success story, but it's also a failure story, like a million times over. I am like, I'm human. I'm ridiculously human. And, um, <laughs> I've done some, <laughs> yeah, we all are. That's awesome. the thing to remember. Like you see these, these people with all these sales, they have made so many mistakes and they're, and you're making mistakes, but they're making mistakes too. And even once you're established, like I still do things that completely flop and I'm like, well, that sucks. Let's try something else. You know, um, it really is just about getting, like picking yourself back up and getting out there and trying again. Like that's really I, what make or break it for successful businesses. Yeah. I heard a great quote and I could be, I'm terrible at quoting it verbatim. <laughs> I just get the gist of things, but it's one that, um, good entrepreneurs or successful entrepreneurs fall down seven times and get up eight. Yeah. I think it's really easy with social that. media just to show what you want people to see, but they don't see your failures. Mm -hmm. It's easier to cover them up. So, um, it's really refreshing to hear that. Yeah. And oh, no, I've got stories for days. <laughs> we'll chat later. <laughs> <laughs> this is good though, to show people that you've learned from experience and you're teaching people how to avoid those mistakes. Now yeah. some are unavoidable. You have to learn as you go, but to learn as much as you can at the outset so that you can try to avoid as yes. many. Yeah, no, I absolutely agree with that. Like, um, I call myself a solopreneur kind of, cause I, I kind of do my own thing. Like, yeah, I, I contract out with work. Um, but just because I'm a solopreneur, like I don't have to do it solo. And I think that's something that a lot of Etsy sellers when they're starting out, they think they just have to do absolutely everything by themselves. But like you said, like, it's so important to get the education and, and learn and ask and follow blogs that have advice. Like, I couldn't find anything when I was first starting on Etsy. I was like, I just want to know someone that sold successfully to share their secrets and nobody would, everybody's pretty tight, closed lip, you know, and that, and that's fine if that's what works for them. Um, but I created morganeal.com because I was like, everybody needs help. Like at some point, and if I can help someone not make the same mistakes and shed the same tears that I did, like, let's do it. So that's awesome. Um, I, yeah, I would highly recommend just looking for all the resources you possibly can to, um, to help yourself to make, you know, fewer mistakes, you're still going to make mistakes. Like that's just kind of part of being in business. And it, it's good part actually, cause you can, you know, make some of your best successes out of those mistakes. But, but if you yeah. can save yourself from mistakes that you don't have to make, like totally do it. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome advice. And speaking of challenges, mm -hmm. what are the, what are some of the biggest challenges running a shop as opposed to service based businesses? Um, so first off, I want to say that I service-based businesses, um, to me seem harder, <laughs> like, because there isn't a tangible product. Like, yes, there's like a logo package or yes, there's, you know, a, a PDF document with a, a report or something. But, um, right. to me, product-based businesses, business just made sense to start out with, especially because there is a tangible product. Like people are paying money because they want that tangible product, not because they're thinking, well, maybe I'll get something useful out of this. Like they just, they want that yeah. product. Um, but with that, there comes a lot of challenges because like for a service-based business owner, yes, you wear a ton of hats, but for a product-based one, to some extent, I feel like you wear more hats because mm -hmm. you have to figure out packaging. You have to figure out your product. You have to do, go through the prototypes and the research and development okay. um, and sending it out to people to see if they think it's, you know, something good or not. And then you have to do photography, which is huge. Um, and then you have to list it and you still have to ship it. Like once, it, once they buy, like I would not discourage anybody from running it a product based business. I love it. It's, it's so good, but there's a lot of work that has to go into it yeah. for sure. And it's just things you don't have to think about with the service business, but with product you kind of do, and you can hire that out as you get bigger. I um, mean, you can get help and, and you can automate and streamline a lot of your processes. Um, but you still, at the end of the day, you still have a physical product that has to be photographed and listed and you have to send it out. Like that's just kind of how it is. So there's a lot yeah. more work involved, but at the same time, it's, it's really rewarding to send out products to customers all over the world. Um, I remember, yeah, my first international one was to Norway. I have a huge Norway fan base for little hybrid. I wow. don't know why, but there are so many people from Norway that buy my stuff, which is awesome. And that I is awesome. getting so excited about that, that I was sending headbands over to Norway and there was a little Norwegian baby that was going to wear these headbands. I was so excited. And that's one of the things I love about selling on Etsy is just the diversity. Um, we've shipped all over the world and it's been so fun to connect with customers from all over. Um, it's been awesome. So I, I love selling product. Absolutely. And I'd recommend so, it. If you're thinking about it, I'd recommend it. So one thing that I 
I still run into with sending things out to um, my course participants and clients, shipping. Mm -hmm. I know that can be a humongous hurdle for people in product-based businesses. So how did you, where did you start with shipping and what advice would you give to people with shipping products? Yeah. So I was terrified when I first started out shipping. I'm like, I don't know how to do this. Like, there's no way I can do this. Um, <laughs> I was, yeah, I was terrified of shipping. And so I lived in St. Anthony, Idaho at the time that I was, yeah, that I was selling the stationery, um, which is a cold place. Don't live there. But I decided that I was going to just go to the local post office and ask how to do it. Like, it was so dumb. I didn't come with my own packaging. I just had this product. And I was like, hey, can you help me ship this? Um, and yeah. they kind of showed me a few things. And I got totally ripped off. Like, shipping-wise, like, it was, it cost a lot of money to ship just that little package of note cards. Um, yeah. So I was like, hey, there's got to be a wet, better way. And so that's, this is the part where, like, the Etsy forums are awesome. Everybody has, like, practical advice and not all the advice on there is good, but in terms mm -hmm. of like shipping and things like that, um, people are more than happy to share their experiences and what's worked for them um, and what companies to avoid and things like that. And I found that you could just do it on Etsy, um, which I'm sure everybody <laughs> probably knows. I was probably really late to the ball game, but it was so easy and it just became so easy and it was streamlined, you know, the shipping costs. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't have to run to the post office. They could just pick them up at my house and things like that. And and it was great. And so even though like shipping seems scary, it's, it's really not like, and if you do it through Etsy, they provide tracking. Um, they can help you file claims if your package gets lost and things like that. So it's no. not, not anything to worry about. I've, I mean, we've had almost 20,000 sales and I would say under, under a hundred maybe that we've had any oh, sort wow. of issues with. Yeah. So it's, I mean, it's, Postal service services is unreliable, but it's totally reliable. <laughs> You'll come up with those, know. those hurdles, but, um, there's nothing you can't handle and you figure it out as you go. And it's really not. Yeah. So I don't know. It's not as big a hurdle. Like it's, you can get anxious about it, thinking about it, but once you do it, you're like, Oh, well that was really easy. So yeah, that's so, awesome. Yeah. Um, do you have a post on, on shipping? I don't yet. I need to write that one down. I Put will. that in your head. I will. <laughs> sure some people tuning in would love to see that too. Yeah. If you're willing. Yeah. Where I get my supplies and all that stuff for sure. Yeah. For yep, I will. Yep. I will. That's that a good idea. Because I know when I was selling products, that was always one of the biggest struggles for me was figuring out shipping. Um, so before we, this L chat is flying by. Oh, this no. has been awesome. Morgan. Um, before we go t over to the question section, what are, I'm curious to know, three pieces of advice that you would give to shop owners who want to receive a full-time income from their shop? Okay, yeah. Um, I would say number one, to treat your shop like a full-time business. And even mm -hmm. if you're working that nine to five or you got a screaming newborn at home, that's me, um, <laughs> you don't have to put in the full-time hours, but you do need to treat it like a full-time business. Um, and that that means essentially responding to conversations that you get within hours, um, letting your customers know if you take weekends off, like the, the turnaround time is not reflected in the weekends, just little, little things like that um, make all the difference. Um, and handling complaints with grace <laughs> is huge. Like it's unavoidable. You'll get the people that are just so disappointed in your product or the shipping speed or things like that, things that you might not even have control over. Um, and the best thing to do with that is to treat your business like a real business to not get personally involved. I usually step away and sometimes I would even have my husband write the response because I was just so, so wound up over the whole ordeal. Um, yes. That's so, happened on my end too. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> no, it's really good. <laughs> so <laughs> <big circle. laughs> um, but yeah, just making sure that you treat like full-time business and you're treating your customers um, like their customers that they're not the last priority on your list that they are paying customers and you fully intend to, you know, fulfill their order as quickly as possible. Um, so awesome. that's one that I would share. Um, the second one was something that I learned out with those growing pains was work, um, smarter, not harder. So when I started growing fast, like before I was doing everything, like the day of, I was cutting out the fabric the day of, and I was sewing it and I was making the headbands and packaging and doing labels. I was just doing all that stuff the exact day, like the item sold, which was fine when it was really, really small increments. But once things started to grow a little bit crazy and I started adding more products, like taking one photo and then editing it by itself and then posting it, like it just wasn't efficient. I was wasting so much time. Um, 
And Melissa Griffin, who's a blogger, she actually introduced me to the concept of batching, which I'm sure everybody's heard of too. Batching, <laughs> like, yes. batching yes. But it, for whatever reason, I was completely late to the game. And I was like, oh, well, that makes sense. Like, it's common sense. And batching is just simply taking um, certain tasks that you have to do with your business, so like photography, um, listing products, filling orders and things like that, and just batching them into different different days or different increments of time, depending on how your schedule is. So I would take, you know, all my photographs for the month on, you know, this Monday, and I would edit them on that Tuesday. And so I wouldn't be editing like one single photo at a time. Like I just did it all in one go. That way everything looked a lot cleaner, um, a lot more streamlined and, right. and reflective of my brand. Um, and then I wasn't worried about photography the rest of the month, which was awesome. Like I wasn't like, oh my gosh, I need to take a photo for tomorrow's Instagram. Like, no, I was already done. And so That's that was... Awesome that was huge. Um, and especially with adding products, it was a huge thing too. just getting all the designs out there. Cause I designed my own fabrics for my products and, um, just sending out all the designs all at once, getting them back, sewing them up, photographing them in batches. It was just, I don't know. That's like the best advice I can give you. Just work yeah. smarter and handle all your, I mean, just handle everything you possibly can in giant batches of time and you will just save yourself so much. <laughs> Seriously. I, I've even implemented batching into our personal life and do batch meals. So at the beginning yeah. of the week, like prepping meals, and it has saved me so much time during the work week. So yeah. batching is, is a lifesaver. Yes, yes. <laughs> absolutely. Um, and then my third piece of advice would be to learn as much as you can. And we kind of talked about this, but I love learning. Um, I miss school. Like I'm one of those people that I graduated college and I felt like I'd left, you know, part of my soul <laughs> on campus. I love learning. Um, yeah. And so with starting Which this business, awesome as a business I, owner. yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, my husband is still in school and I was so jealous of him, which sounds ridiculous, but I was so jealous like that he was going to classes and he was talking with teachers and other, you know, his, his uh, peers. And I was just so jealous. And I was like, you know what, I'm going to not stop learning. Like I'm going to learn online. Um, and so I just started taking workshops and signing up for classes. I actually, before I like Lauren's my coach, but, um, I actually hired a, a coach to work with my Etsy shop way back in the day. Um, uh, just to learn from her, a marketing expert on that, which was amazing thing to do. And so I just would say constantly keep learning. There's, um, mm -hmm. strategies that work today won't necessarily work a year from now. Like the online market, the online, um, e-commerce industry is like constantly changing and things, oh, yeah. social media is constantly changing. Um, and so just keep learning and get those new ideas and try them out. It's, it's the biggest thing you can do. I love learning. I'm like taking like three online classes right now. <laughs> I just love it. Like it's a lot of stuff, but I, I just love learning and just becoming the best version of myself I can be so that my business can be the best version it can be. So I think that's an awesome lesson too. And it isn't talked about enough. A lot of the oh, there's success something from Rexburg. Cool. That's my old stomping ground. <laughs> Sorry. I saw that on you. I know. Yay. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, but I think, oh man, I lost I'm it. I'm sorry, <laughs> gosh. I got no, excited about Rexburg. I like never want to live back up there again. There's so much snow, but that was my old stomping ground. So That's awesome. <laughs> I love when that happens. Whenever somebody tunes in from Charlotte, I do the same thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, but that's awesome. So are you ready for Q and A? Yeah, I would love to. We'll get through as many of these as we can before okay. the hour. Sounds great. So Samantha asks, oh, and we have 11. So we'll see how many we can Ooh. get through. Okay. It'll be fun to talk to you. All right. Oh, what I was going to say about learning. I know where I was on this. I was just going to throw this out there. The, the most successful people that you see online doing big things have a coach or they have yeah. someone that learning from. And, um, I've had a coach. It was one of the best investments that I could have made in my business. Um, just to have an outside opinion and, and have an expert opinion on things too. So I love that you mentioned continuing to learn. I think that's huge. Anyway, back to the mm -hmm. Q and A. Okay. My two cents on that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Samantha asks, can you talk about the best ways you promote your product online, promoted listings, Facebook, Pinterest, et cetera. So what else do you do other than Etsy doing the marketing for you? Um, so Instagram has been huge for us. Um, I think for Etsy, I, whenever people are like, where should I spend my time? Because there seems to be so many social media platforms. And I feel like a lot of experts out there are like, get on everything. So nobody misses you ever like, no, <laughs> you won't have time. And you'll kind of, I mean, you'll for be now. mediocre at best on all of them. And yeah. so I recommend, and what I do is I just pick two that I focus on. Um, Pinterest isn't really social media. I guess it's more search engine, it but it's yeah. both. And so I put Pinterest in that category. Um, and Instagram are the best ones you can do for Etsy, like hands down. 
Um, they're both visual based and that's what Etsy is, is you're trying to sell a product with photos essentially. So um, I do a lot of Instagram. I, well, I don't, and I've been trying to do the Morgan Neald stuff. It's crazy, <laughs> but I, Instagram has been like, whenever I need a crazy spike in sales or things are slower, I'm introducing new product. I can post on Instagram and within an hour or two, you know, the sales spike for that day. Um, mm -hmm. So there are definitely people like on Instagram looking to buy product. And if they're not looking to buy product, they'll see your product and be like, yeah, now I'm looking to buy. So um, there's totally people on there and you can totally make sales through Instagram on Etsy. And then yeah. Pinterest is huge because it's a visual search engine. Um, Pinterest is amazing. I love Pinterest because I don't have to do all the work. Like my customers do a lot of it too. They pin my images oh, yeah. and things like that. And that's, I drive my second. Um, so direct through search is my, my biggest driver of traffic for my Etsy shop. But Pinterest is hands down the second one, like yeah. no competition. Um, and a lot of it is also making sure that your photos are at, like optimized on Etsy. So that's just something I want to throw in. Like the photos they recommend are all like horizontal ones, which is fine for Etsy, but for Pinterest, it's not awesome. Like you want long vertical images. And so if you can upload those to Etsy, like they'll still crop them to that horizontal shot for the thumbnail. But when people pin it, it'll be the long vertical image, which is huge yeah. for getting found on Pinterest. So, Oh, absolutely. It shows up bigger in the feed. Yep. So. Uh -huh. More, yeah. More real estate space. Is that what they say? More? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know. The column width is set. So if your width is, you know, if you have a horizontal image, it's not going to show up as big, yep. but if you have a vertical image, um, it doesn't, the width isn't such a hang up, but that's awesome advice. Um, do you ever do promoted listings? Do you ever like pay for I, ads or anything? No, or is it I have not paid for any ads ever actually. Awesome. Well, I think, no, I did. That's a lie. I did promoted pins um, when it first came out because I wanted to try yeah. it. And that was actually a really big help. Um, mm -hmm. It was like just a huge sales boost. And and it's a great way to jumpstart your items like on Pinterest to start getting the repins and things. And so when you stop promoting, it's still working for you, which is kind of oh, why yeah. I chose Pinterest. It wasn't like a, okay, I've stopped doing it. Now they've stopped working you know, like Facebook ads or um, Etsy ads. And I've never done Etsy promoted listings. Um, I hear mixed reviews on that. I haven't yeah. needed to. So you don't need to do it to make the money. Like if I can tell you nothing else. Um, but yeah, Pinterest promotion, that was good. That was something that I didn't have to invest a lot of money in. Um, and it still brought in a lot, a lot, a lot of traffic and a lot of sales with that. So that's so helpful. I've done both Facebook ads and Pinterest promotions earlier this year. And I would agree. Pinterest was by far, yeah. I got the biggest return on my investment, Facebook. And it's the easiest to understand. Like Facebook is a little tricky. I'm taking a course on Facebook ads right now. So I will be sharing all that stuff on the blog. You You're like, <laughs> why do I do Facebook ads? But, um, I don't know yet. So we're learning, but Pinterest is pretty straightforward. If you, if you're looking to do ads, I would highly recommend Pinterest for your yeah. ads. And like you said, you get a return on it mm -hmm. when people attend, then they're, it's just exponential from there. Yep. Absolutely. Really good question, Samantha. Thank you for asking. Next question is from Mariah. She says, do you find it's better to group products together and sell them as a package or to sell individual items? How do you define when to do which? That's a really good that question. That is a great question. Um, and I actually have a lot of thoughts on this. <laughs> so I sell baby headbands. Did we not know that yet? <laughs> I sell baby headbands. So I started, <laughs> I started out selling them, um, singles by singles. And then I decided I was going to package them up in a set of three. And it was honestly the smartest business decision I've ever made. Um, people save, I think like $2 on a set of three. So it's not anything like crazy. Um, but I hands down will probably sell like eight out of 10 will be for packages wow. of three. Like it's a huge thing. Um, and instead of just earning that $10 from the headband, I'm earning the $28 from the package of three headbands. Um, I also, and this is something I'm going to be playing around with in the new year, but packaging things in bundles with similar items because I have baby hats in there and like blankets and things like that and doing um, like a baby shower gift bundle. But I know a lot of Etsy six sellers, six sellers, oh my gosh, successful sellers that I talk with and things like that that do that and have found a lot of success with that. Um, just grouping things together and maybe you're offering a small discount, um, but making it like to seem like the ultimate no brainer package for you to purchase. Um, so I don't know. I would recommend grouping them together. I think I still get a lot of requests for, um, certain styles to be sold, like sold solo. I took them off for a while and people were like, wait, what if I want to just buy one? And 
like it's I mean it's obviously your choice but I have both of them on there and I find that a lot of people look to just buy one and then they'll leave me a note and be like I saw I was just gonna buy one headband but then I saw you had packages of three and this one was so cute and so it's a lot of it's just about inspiring people like giving planning the idea in their head like not sleazy marketing just planning the idea and then suddenly they're like oh well well yeah no I can do with three headbands you know or three of whatever product so um, I would totally recommend packaging and playing around with your pricing tiers just to kind of see where mm. your sweet spot is. It's going to, I I mean, definitely test it and see what's kind of working and what's not. Um, but I think you should absolutely do that. And it gives you more items in your shop without having to create more items, which is huge for Etsy sellers because time is, time is short for us. So yeah, absolutely. I think too, like you mentioned earlier with AB testing, mm -hmm. try it out. See yeah, it works. absolutely. You can't lose anything. So that's that's really awesome advice great question mariah all right teresa asks can you shed some light on how you name your products so they're easily found but also stand out these are all good so, questions yeah they are um so it really depends on what your goal is on etsy if you're planning on bringing a lot of your traffic in yourself then it's really not um not a problem if you want to name it you know some cutesy name or some unique name but if you're looking to primarily use Etsy SEO as your initial driving traffic factor, if you will, you like, there's no reason for you to try and stand out. Um, <laughs> like that sounds really weird advice, but SEO is not about standing out. It's just about um, coming up with the most commonly searched keyword phrases, um, long tail and short tail. And I've got a whole blog post on that too. <laughs> SEO is a heavy topic. But um, it's just about using your keywords smartly and naming your listings smartly so they're reflected in SEO. Um, eventually, as you get established and you kind of get those returning customers and just that regular, consistent daily sales, then yeah, you can you can play around with um, naming your products a little bit unique and things like that. But from what I from what I've experienced and from what people have said, they don't ever get hung up on the listing title. They really just look at the the photo and that's kind of what makes them decide to click on it or not. It's not necessarily the listing title. The listing title on Etsy is all about getting found. So that's my advice there. Like your photo is what's going to do the talking for you. So that's exactly what I was about to say. I was going to say the search gets them to the page, but mm -hmm. the photos probably yep. would stand out. Yep. Not really the name. That's really good advice. Thank you, Teresa, for that question. All right, Michaela. I'd love more information on how to effectively use content marketing for a product-based business. Ooh, this is a good one. I mentioned <laughs> content marketing in this week's email. Um, so did you blog with Little so Hyder? I did, and it's not up anymore because I just got <laughs> overwhelmed because I'm trying to do this whole new thing. So let's just oh, be yeah. honest. Like, I don't have the blog anymore. Um, but I did use it for, um, I did it for like five or six months, I think, just trying it out, seeing how it worked out for me. Um, one of the best things I did with content marketing was I did roundup posts and yeah, they're kind of a dime a dozen. Um, but I made sure to, so this is like one of my best and it's totally in that download that um, is on the link below the crowdcasting. Yes. But one of I my best, it. yeah, one of my best pieces of, advi of advice is to um, go around Etsy and find a whole bunch of items all under one category and then create a roundup post for that and put it on your blog. Um, but then send Etsy conversations to the owners of all like the shops that from the items you featured and like give them graphics to promote it themselves, like an Instagram size graphic and a Pinterest graphic and things like that. And just encourage them to promote it and just say, you know, it's a win-win for all of us, however much traffic we drive. And like, I've had shops with like infinitely more sales than me that have been like, awesome, thanks. I'll put it on Instagram. And then, you know, there's a huge, huge rush in sales. It's just, I don't know. It's awesome. That <laughs> so, is a really good so advice. That is, I, oh, sorry. I, no, I was just going to say when I had, so I had, I sold planners, but before that I had an Etsy shop selling prints yeah. and there was this one interior designer who featured me in a roundup post just like that. And I got a ton of sales mm -hmm. from it and I was more than happy to share it on my end too, if they're featuring me in it. Um, yeah, so that absolutely. is absolutely Really good. And I feel like a lot of people are sometimes like scared to do things and ask for people to share stuff because they don't want to like bother them or, or get the rejection. But like the best thing, I mean, the best thing that can happen is you're going to get a ton of sales and a ton of new traffic and fans and customers. And the worst thing that happens is they say no, and then you just move on to the next person. Right. Like it really, I don't know, it really is content marketing was something that I just tried out and it was it was really effective for me. So yeah. And when you when you position it that way instead of, hey, just buy my products, uh -huh. 
it's a lot more organic. And a lot of times people need inspiration for things like that too. So like a baby shower gift. Yeah. Have headbands and a blanket and, you know, mm -hmm. putting things together. They need help with that. Or if it, if you are creating something like pillows for interior design, show it with prints and, you know, other things. Put it in an environment in a blog post. Mm -hmm. Like a lifestyle. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, those are great ideas. Great Absolutely. question, Kayla. We have five more minutes. Let's see if we can get through okay. a couple more. Samantha says, when you are referring to SEO, are you just talking about your Etsy tags and then just wording for your product name and description? So uh, are you SEO on Etsy or SEO on Google or when you refer to SEO for so, your shop? Yeah, so Etsy SEO is awesome in the sense that it's really effective for Google too. Um, there are certain parts of the of each of your Etsy, Etsy listings that um, they the S, Etsy, oh my gosh, this is like the tongue twister of all <laughs> tongue twisters. Sorry. The SEO on Etsy picks up and then Google will pick up different parts, like those same parts, but then also different parts. Um, and so for when I say SEO, um, I'm talking mainly about Etsy one. So the, the listing title and your tags need to match exactly, like exactly. It's not repetitive. You're not going to reach more people by choosing different words for your title and different words for your tags. Like you want them to match exactly so that um, Etsy finds you more relevant and shows you higher. Um, and then Google uses those words too in their search. And they also use your product description, the first 60 characters, 90 characters. I can't remember exactly, but Etsy doesn't read the description. So um, if you're looking to appear high on like Google and Bing and things like that, I would make sure to put those keywords sprinkle them throughout your description as well in those first few sentences because that will really help you get found on Google. Um, Etsy doesn't look at it yet, but they might. So, and Google yeah. also looks at um, shop sections, like the section names and things like that. Um, mm -hmm. Like if your baby headbands, baby hats, baby blankets and things like that. So make sure and optimize those too because Google totally reads those as well. So <laughs> I've like learned a lot about Google recently. <laughs> I <laughs> bet. <been> fun. Awesome. <laughs> super helpful. So, and even if Etsy doesn't recognize it, it's super helpful to show up Quickly. And they might at some point, you don't, they constantly change. Yeah. So better to just do all of it right. Mm -hmm. uh, right from the get go. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. All right. Celine asks, how do you set up your ads on Facebook? Specifically, how do you choose what audience to target? Oh, Sounds like you're still I'm kind of on that. Yep. figuring it out. <laughs> I have run, um, in like just recently, I ran an ad for some of my little hybrid products, just a product ad, not anything fancy, um, and did see an right. increase in sales from that. It wasn't because I was putting a lot of, um, there is money and cost and time involved in creating a handmade product. It wasn't worth it for me. The ROI wasn't worth it, like the return on investment. So I didn't do that, but I definitely did see an increase in sales. Um, but with that, I would recommend taking a course. Like I'm taking one from Beth Ann from Brilliant Business Moms right now, and I love it. Like it's been so helpful, and I still haven't run my first ad, but just reading it from someone that's done it, it's the fastest way you can learn how to do that kind of stuff. Um, and it's really, you can learn from her mistakes and things like that. Um, wow. So yeah, I don't have Facebook ad experience. Like I would love to, <laughs> but I don't, <laughs> but I will, just not yet. Yes. So. so follow along with Morgan's blog because once she figures it out, I'm sure she'll share yeah, it just I like. Will. <laughs> yeah. um, awesome. Okay. One more. Okay. Claire asks, I would love to know if you think a brand is more successful if all its merchandise has a similar vibe and look targeted at a specific audience or if it's okay to have more variety. Claire, oh, Claire is my friend. She is like been the biggest supporter of me ever. So that shout out awesome. to Claire. She's amazing. I love her so much. <laughs> Awesome. Like she keeps me going when I'm like this. I just can't do this. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. You need people like that. I know it, you do. Um, okay. I have to read her comment again though, because I was like so excited to find out it was Claire. She asked if a brand is more successful, if all the merchandise has a similar vibe and look target targeted at a specific audience, or if it's better to have variety. Selling on Etsy, I'd absolutely hundred percent say you want it to have the similar vibe and feel. Your um, Etsy shop is not a garage sale. Like eBay is kind of a garage sale site. Do people even use eBay? I don't even know. But, um, or like <laughs> Craigslist or whatever. It's kind of a garage right. sale sort of thing. But Etsy is a boutique shopping experience and people look for that cohesion. Like if they're going to come into your shop, they want to come in to buy like that specific item. They don't want right. to buy, you know, soap if you're also selling, you know, shirts and you're selling jewelry and you're selling erasers. I don't know. <laughs> Like that's yeah. a really weird shop, but, um, you want to, <laughs> <an eraser. laughs> is that so, that is weird. Nobody <laughs> <calls erasers. laughs> 
If you saw oh, erasers, you're story. awesome. Um, I used to collect them when I was in second grade. That is the true story. I have a huge pickle jar full of erasers. Of yeah. <laughs> but you want it to be that boutique shopping experience um, and have everything be cohesive. The photos, like, yes, variety is great and include them in your other four photos. That first photo, though, it should be pretty streamlined, cohesive throughout your shop so that when people pop in, they know what to expect. They know what you sell. They're not like, well, hey, it looks like she sells this over here, but well, what, what's this over here? Like you just, you want it to be cohesive, easy to understand. Um, and that's, what's going to get the customer to decide to buy from you. Cause you look like an expert in the field. It's like automatic credibility. Like, Hey, I sell a lot of soap. So I must know a lot about soap instead mm -hmm. of a whole bunch of little items. And they're like, is she good at any of them? Or does she just kind of mediocre her way through them? So, yeah. And so that way people start to recognize you too, when you mm -hmm. are popping up on a page of baby headbands. Yeah, from all absolutely. The, um, Etsy shops. And I think because you're starting out doesn't mean that you have to look like you're starting out. Oh, it no, absolutely. Pretend, have yeah, make it till you make it. It's like such a cliche phrase and it's so true. Just act like you know what you're doing and by at some point you will. Like, yeah. Or exactly. maybe you won't ever like me. You don't, <laughs> you don't ever feel you like, do. <laughs> yeah. you don't ever feel like you have it all together. There is always a Oh, I've got a cat too. This is Ella. She's named after <laughs> Cinderella because she looks like she's got soot on her nose. She's so cute. <laughs> I know cats in the labs. I know. Heidi is trying surprised. to get in the whole time. Really informal and casual. All right. Um, well, that is the last question, but I hope that was helpful for you guys. Wow. And thank you, Morgan, for answering all of this. It was awesome having you on today. Thank you for being so transparent and sharing. Oh, and tell us too about the um, marketing hacks for product sellers. There's oh, a button wow. right underneath here. Um, one of Morgan's resources. So tell us about that. Yeah. Um, so I created just a free download for everybody that tuned in for L chat. Um, it's just 15 marketing strategies that I've tried out that found really great success with my Etsy shop. Um, I know there's a ton of vague advice out there. Just like take better photos, um, get your phone, you know, get your products on Instagram or whatever. And it's like, that's not advice. And these, so these are like, step-by-step step, like tactics that I've used and had success with and um, have found to be, you know, the highest converting marketing things that I've done for my Etsy shop. And not all of them will work for you probably, but some of them might. Um, and I think it's great because a lot of them aren't really online. They're just things that I've found out from trial and error. So um, they worked really well for me and for a lot of the people that I've coached before. So it's, it's worth awesome. looking at and you'll probably see something that you haven't even thought of that might be a perfect fit for your business. So yeah. That's awesome. And Morgan does offer coaching services too. So if you want to learn directly from her, yeah. go to her website too and be sure to follow along with her. At the very least, check out her blog because she has so many awesome resources there. So, um, And I will be sure to add the link as soon as we get off of here so that you so it's right at the bottom of this chat so you can find it. But um, thank you all so much for tuning in. And um, the next L Chats will be posted shortly for 2017. There aren't any upcoming so far. But this was an awesome chat to round out 2016. Yeah. Thank you so much Thanks for joining for having me. me. It's been fun. And I it has been so fun. Best wishes with your shops, guys. And I hope to see you in another L Chat in 2017. See you later. See you guys.